Today I'm changing the, the fuel pump on my 2001 uh, 93 convertible. Now the older Saabs, this is under the back seat that you're looking at here. There's uh, an access hole. On the older Saabs, it was nice because they made the access hole uh, positions in such a way that you could uh, take the pump out without pulling out the gas tank. And just take it out here. But this access hole really only gives you access to <clears throat> the wiring and, and that. Uh, now, what some people have done, which I, I just don't recommend it, is they'll they'll cut this hole here, you know, widen it out to to get access to the taking the fuel pump out of the top of the gas tank. <clears throat> you know, they'll cut up the body on the car. Um, I don't recommend it unless you got a real a real junker or something. And you just want to save that that time. So the right way to do it is to pull the gas tank out and. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today. I just want to show you if for some reason you want to uh, get gas out of your um, old generation 9.3 made from uh, 99 through uh, 2002 and the 2003 convertible and also the uh, 94 to 98 900s would be similar um, but here's what you do uh, in my case I'm getting ready to pull out the gas tank and I want to change the fuel pump as a maintenance item because uh, my 93 convertible has got 128,000 miles on it and the pumps never been changed and once you get up to that miles you can go at any time so let me just show you uh, what to do if you're this uh, the car's got about a half a tank of gas and so I'd like to get the gas tank a lot lighter to work with it and so here's what you do now under here you've got your two fuel lines to the rail uh, for your and uh, you want to identify the the pressure line which is the one here is slightly bigger and then you'll see the re return line here is, is slightly smaller and what you'll need to get the line off is a tool something like this and uh, it just slips in there and releases the clip you, you'll, you'll push the line back a little bit pop it against the tool and then and then pull it out and before you do that, there's these uh, these rubber, just kind of dust uh, insulators there. Spray them with something because they, they get kind of dried out. Then maybe take a pick like this and you can work under and, and just push that back uh, out of your way. Now let me show you. Basically I've taken the, um, the fill line and, uh, putting it in a, in a gas can and what you want to do you can power up your fuel pump I'll, I'll show you the fuse in a minute but just to comment on that you can run a power lead uh, from your battery and uh, what you want to do is run it through a, a switch so that you're not putting this clip on and off the battery and causing sparks because sparks around a battery are never a good idea and then sparks around fuel so you want to use some some kind of toggle switch in line with your wire let me just show you the fuse your fuse panel on the side here it's nice on these older 93's unlike the, unlike the uh, newer Saabs everything's labeled on the cover and so you just find uh, number 32 there it says fuel pump which is this one right here you see I put a the lower side is your your feed side to the uh, the fuel pump relay and so you want to get power on this side of it and so I just ran a jumper and then as I mentioned have it switched and then you can just fill up the cans and 
and get the, the tank down to uh, the level you want to get it at. You know, as for me, working with one of the gas tanks, especially without a lift, is, um, you know, I want it to be as light as possible in removing it. So I just thought I'd show you that. Now the first thing in changing the gas tank, if uh, if you don't have a lift, you, you really want to be conscious of safety. You know, I'd, I've seen people in the news get crushed under pickup trucks and things because they thought they could just go under there for a second and they didn't really have it secure and, and they started pushing on something and the truck fell and crushed them to death. It's nothing to mess around with. So what I've done is, uh, if you can see the red jacks forward, I put under the the lift points on the, by the rockers and so that's the main support there and then I've also put a pair under the rear axle kind of as a, just a backup safety uh, there's only a, a little bit of load on them but if for some reason uh, something were to happen when the other ones were to give out or something uh, I've got that extra margin of, of safety which I really recommend. Now, uh, the basic procedure on, on changing the fuel pump is as I mentioned you want to pull the tank out and then you can access the pump from the, the top of the gas tank. Some are intimidated by pulling out the gas tank. It's not really that big a deal. But there are a few obstacles. Um, the rear section of the exhaust system has to come down uh, it's best if you can just remove it. The the, um, the section that runs over the axle needs to come out, and then there's a heat shield above that that needs to to come out, and and then that's basically it as far as getting access to it. Then there's the two straps that hold it in, and you you take those off and uh, lower the tank down and when you get it lo uh, low enough you can disconnect the, the fill tube and really maybe the first thing the fuel filter is located at the right front of the gas tank there I like to take that right out of the way because I'm going to change the fuel filter anyways I recommend that anytime you change the fuel pump change the fuel filter and you, so it's nice to just get it out of the way take that off so then you're Your one line is disconnected, one fuel line, and now you've got the return line. Now when you get the tank low enough, you can just disconnect the, the lines out of the top of the pump, disconnect the uh, electrical connectors on the pump, and then you're, you've also got um, a uh, EVAP system hose that's got to be disconnected, no big deal. So then you basically can just lower the tank out and I'll slide it out from under the car and then I'll have easy access to the pump and I'll show you that when I get to that point there's a special tool that you know people you can look on YouTube people have made their own and um, I think the tool is like 32 bucks to actually to get the, the tool itself but I'll show you that when I get to it so that's the basic steps Exhaust has got to come off, exhaust heat shield has got to come off, and um, that will give you access to, the, to dropping the, the tank out. Okay, here's my stuff for the uh, fuel pump job. <clears throat> I'm also going to do uh, the parking brake cable, because my parking brake cable is hanging up and there's an overlap with some of the uh, work to access the gas tank it also gives me access to the parking brake cable so uh, anytime you can save labor it's a good idea and as I mentioned you always want to change the the fuel filter when you're changing the the fuel pump and when you do I'll talk more about that later but these seals with the rubber 
not you don't want to use the copper seals you want to use these with the rubber these, they seal up excellently on the first time now here's a homemade version of the tool they make as you see it's just a I took an old socket welded to these ears here and that'll fit on the the ring on the pump a lot of people have made other things you can some people have take, taken uh, uh, PVC pipe and things like that and made a tool but anyways you're gonna need something to put an even turn on that ring to get it off of there The right and the left cable come as one unit. And here's, I like um, dealing with E Euro parts. They've, they've got a lot of good saw parts. Now this pump here, you know, you can pay, you can pay $500 for a pump, but you can get a decent, <clears throat> this company, Professional Part Sweden, you know, probably made in China, but um, they're decent parts you can rely on for a much less expensive uh, price. Here's the the seal ring, and it, well, here's your your lock ring and your seal. So you see, this is. Tool will fit in the slots there, like so, and you can turn it. They give you a new when you get a pump. They give you a new, a new ring. So that's the parts. So to get started here, uh, and I should mention uh, one of the very first things you want to do. Is um, especially if you've got a car that's uh, been driven up north in the salt belt. Early on, before you really get started working on stuff, take that and spray up uh, a few things. You want to spray up the if you're doing the parking brake cable, you want to spray up the uh, the uh, the adjuster rod because that can get rusty and it can be a real ordeal getting the nut off of that, and you've got to to uh, take that out to change the uh, you got to take the nut off that rod to change the cable and so you want to spray that up and also the the two um, nuts that hold the, the straps on the gas tank straps you want to spray those up also the nuts uh, there's three nuts holding on the exhaust heat shield you want to spray that up and then your exhaust clamps if if they're in salvageable shape, you can spray those up and they'll, they'll come off. It's a good idea to let that stuff soak in for a while. Spray that up before, while you're getting set up with the rest of your work. Okay, first step, you're going to want to get the exhaust out of the way. Now, mine's going to be a little bit more difficult because I've got a performance exhaust system on here and these big pipes, the way they're um, sleeved together, they won't come apart real easy. Not like the original Saab. Now here's an example of the original Saab clamps. See the flex pipe has just been recently changed. And these are real nice. I just love these. I think every exhaust system in the world should be put together with these. It's just a, a ball end <clears throat> and the clamp, when you tighten it up, it just squeezes it together. And so you've never got an issue, you know, where you have the sleeved pipes, where you have a good pipe you want to save and you got to get it free from the old pipe. But these will come right apart. So if you want to change, like these flex pipes go frequently, it's easy to just pop that in there. So what I'm going to have to do, normally uh, doing this tank, 
this uh, center muffler here, the resonator, and the pipe that goes over the axle is normally one piece, and you would just take it loose from the back of the flex pipe, and from the other end of the axle, it's attached to the rear muffler, and you would just take these two clamps off, this one and the other one, and then you'd be able to uh, drop that that pipe out of there, take it off from over the axle and be out of your way, because you want to get at, see that here there's a heat shield that's over this pipe that shields the gas tank and from the heat, and so you're going to have to get, take this off, and also if you're going to change your parking brake cables. And so, I th what I'm going to do, because I think if I take the clamp off here at the uh, flex pipe and just hang this pipe down, it'll give me enough room to get this heat shield out of here, and then it should uh, drop enough to give me clearance for the gas tank, because the gas tank, <coughs> as you drop it, it can slide out um, to the right side of the car. Just the edge of the gas tank, you can't see it here, but it's, it goes over this heat shield. And so, you need a little bit of drop, and then you can slide it over. So, here we go. I'm gonna take off the exhaust clamp and see if I get enough room. Here's the heat shield that I'm working on. Got the one nut off here. Had to work it back and forth carefully so as not to break the stud on the body. If worst came to worse and you broke the stud off there, you could always just run a, a little sheet metal screw in there. It's no big deal. So I'm working on that one over there. And then there's one in the in the rear end of the heat shield. Okay, I've got the heat shield loose without breaking any of the the studs there, the three to get it off. Only thing is, not quite enough room to get it out of there. But, um, you know, I don't want to mangle it. But here you can see the edge of the gas tank that's over the heat shield. And you also see your parking brake cable. So you see why Getting this heat shield down gives you access to the parking brake cable as well. And so, I think um, dropping the exhaust this far and the heat shield down will give me enough room to, when I take the strap off the straps off the tank, to drop the tank enough and then slide it out from on top here. Now to take your fuel filter off, 
there was a plastic cover here with uh, plastic uh, 10 millimeter nuts on these two body studs. So you just you just uh, take that off to expose your your filter here. Now this will be a Torx 30. It can be pretty rusty. What I'll do is I'll stick a Torx 30 on there with a um, extension and then just just tap on the extension with the hammer and that'll free up the rust there and then hopefully um, it's just a screw so even if it's rusty you should be able to unscrew it but tap on it first tap on your extension give it a, a decent whack and then that should come out on the band here but before you do that while it's still secure in the band loosen up your your banjo bolts and before you do that you want to make sure you have it depressurized because it'll spray so there's a on the fuel injection rail up on the engine you can just uh, little valve there you can just press down with a small screwdriver on the valve and depressurize it so you don't get sprayed you'll have a 17 millimeter banjo bolt on this side and a 19 on the other side the uh, 7 8 will work on the filter itself to hold it and break that free on the other side I just use it's a bigger nut on the filter so I'll just use a, an adjustable wrench to hold the filter and then the 19 millimeter box wrench to pop it free well here's your filter As you can see this is really rusty I've actually this car is uh, originally from New Jersey and then it spent some years in Ohio which um, even though the body under underneath the car the the bodies on these sobs really hold up well but some of the stuff like these fuel filters and things will rust and I've actually seen these leak where you get a pinhole on the end so under pressure you'd have a little spray leak and this one's been on there for a while but really this and then the fuel pump being original with 128,000 miles is just a breakdown waiting to happen so that's why um, since I've gotten this car, I'm going to take care of these items. And that way, too, uh, if I sell the car, I'll feel good about it. So the next owner isn't faced with a, a breakdown. It's never fun. couple of other things to show you on getting the gas tank out. Now the straps, since these were rusty, I only backed them off so far and then a little trick. You can, oh there goes the tank. <laughs> it's like nothing in it. Anyways, um, what you can do is the, the stud on the end of the strap comes through here there's a hole and there's a little ridge so once you so once you get it backed off some instead of playing with the, the rusty stud I'll just um, pry up on it with a screwdriver and you can push it up over the little ridge here and it'll drop through the hole now later before I put it back in I'll clean up the straps and um, I'll put some nice uh, lubricant on the threads where they'll never rust again preventative so I got enough room you know the question was with the exhaust I just dropped it by disconnecting it at the um, flex pipe and that did give me enough room so 
since the gas tank's basically empty, it's very light. It's just plastic. So I didn't even bother to put a jack on it or anything. Now the couple of other things to disconnect were they show you here there's a a fill hose and that's got a a clamp with a seven millimeter head on it. These are nice, they don't usually rust this style clamp. So you take that off and then just break the seal on the hose and pull that off. And this is a evap hose that connects to here. And it's just got a couple little clips here. And it can be a little tricky because you've got to squeeze them both in at the same time. And at the same time that you pull it out. And it's a little tight because it's an evap system. It's got a seal well. It's a double o-ring inside the hose here. The other thing you can do is gently gently pry on the part here by the um, where the clips lock on this side you put a little WD-40 in there and then pry on those with a nice uh, little pointy screwdriver and you can because these can be a little bit of a nuisance if you've never done it before. But you can pry up on these a little bit. They're flexible enough. Don't break them. Pry up on them a little bit. At the same time that you, you pull out the, the hose there. So you can disconnect that one. Then this um, bigger EVAP hose is a lot easier to get off. It's just got a couple lock clips here that lock over this ridge here. I just took a screwdriver and popped that off. So now basically all that's left to getting the tank out of the car is um, disconnecting the fuel line on the top here and the electrical connectors. And then I'll slide the, pump, the tank out of the car and I'll show you how to, how to get the pump out of here. A little trick on disconnecting the the wires here. These slide locks, when they're old and dry, plus they can be brittle. If you stick a little screwdriver in the back here and try to pry that off, you can crack them. So what I do is I loop them up, spray them with some WD-40, and then gently pop it. And then when you pop it from this end. You can also push from this side, and that way um, you won't break the lock on it. If you can see here, the uh, this little rabbit ear, metal rabbit ear thing, that was a campaign called the clip and screw. They had a problem on these with, see the yellow uh, clip that holds the fuel line in? the plastic would, would break and then eventually the line could work its way loose and then you would have a gas leak. A potentially dangerous problem so what they did, their solution was we had a campaign, I did a million of these things You'd have, we didn't have to pull the tank all the way out to do it we would drop it down at an angle like it's kind of like it's sitting here on the jack <laughs> of course some of them were full of gas and heavy We there's a little screw here, a little Torx screw. You take the uh, factory screw out, and then they give you another little screw in this rabbit ears, and you screw that down. And you can see it just extra insurance to hold these lines in here in case this plastic lock lock tabs broke. So I've got this campaign on here, so I'm going to have to take. That little Torx grew out and remove this rabbit ear. And um, the lines work them out. I spray WD 40 down in here on the O rings to lubricate them. And then you're going to want to wiggle them back and forth while you gradually lift them up so you don't break them. You don't want to break these lines because these plastic elbows. 
not really hard to um, install in these plastic lines. There's a, a tool they make to hold the line, and you try to press it in there. It's very difficult. You don't want to break it. So just loop them up nice, and patiently work them up, and get them out of the pump without breaking the, the fuel lines. Now just to show you a better view on the clip and screw, the uh, original screw here that you would take out in the campaign was Torx, but the one they give you that comes with the rabbit ears is Phillips. So it's just good to know because it's hard to see up in there, you're laying under the car. So to know it's a Phillips that you're trying to get out, not a Torx. I left the the one line. This is just from the filter, so I, I could leave that on here. And I'll take it out, you know, before I take the pump out. But the the other line runs all the way to the front of the car, so I took that one out. There's the parking brake cables out of the car. There's the gas tank straps. The you know the one end has has your your nut. The other end it just hooks in a slot there, so it pops out real easy. So since they're out of here. I'm going to clean them up nice before I put them back in, like I mentioned. Clean these threads up real good and um, loop them up nice so they'll never seize again. Now as for taking the original pump out of the tank, First thing to note, there's an index mark on the pump and an index mark here on the tank, and these need to line up. <clears throat> and the reason for that when you install the new pump is the um, fuel, uh, the, the float, the level unit for your uh, sending your signal for your, your fuel level. That arm has to be in a certain position so it doesn't interfere with anything. So the pump's got to set in the position where these index marks line up. I'll show you that when I get to it. Now as far as taking it out, I don't have to worry about this electrical line. The new pump comes with this one, but here are my, uh, my pressure feed line I'm going to have to remove. And I sprayed some WD-40 in here because as I mentioned earlier you don't want to break this. And I'll show you how I, how I take that out. doing here is, as I press this plastic lever back, I'll take my pliers and I'll put them right in the center of the circle, not out on the elbow because that's where you might break it. But if you put it right on the circle and you twist it, so I press the release back, just twist it gently while I'm gently lifting, and then it comes out. If you were to grab it by this elbow and do that, Chances are you'll get it out okay, but you don't want to risk breaking this plastic. So that's that. Now I always like to blow the, the dirt away so you don't get the dirt in the tank. Thank you. 
clean that ring out nice. I'll save this dust cover so it does something to keep the dirt off there. tool fits in the slots there. So the key is that this gets an even pressure on the ring, which is important both for removal and uh, installation. Once it starts, it turns easy. You can make your own tool. That takes some time. As I mentioned, a new one, say from E Euro Parts, is about thirty-two dollars. It's a little awkward getting it out. It's barely enough room to get it out of there. And see how the float is? So it's got to sit this way, the new one. Your float over here, and you'll see what those indexes line up. Here's your old O-ring. Lay your O-ring in there. Make sure it sets in the in the groove made for it. This new ring wants to. Pop out of there. <laughs> the old one is stretched and too big. The new one's a little small. Maybe if I get a little stretch, so it'll lay in there. Because what'll happen when you Lay the pump in there on top of it. If it's not in the groove, you're going to have a leak. I'm not comfortable once it's out of my sight. stretch. There, that worked. I had to be a little more aggressive with it. Now we're ready to... Better safe than sorry. I'm ready to drop that in there. mentioned they just give you barely enough foam.
I'll just move it around just a little bit to make sure everything's free there. I like to give the new ring a little bit of uh, WD-40 just to aid the installation. First, turn it down by hand. Now, I'll show you a little something here. As we mentioned, that this index mark is the key to have these lined up. But I found a little trick. If I were to tighten up the ring now with with the tool, what tends to happen is the index line, the pump will rotate with the ring so I like to put the index mark a little bit uh, counterclockwise you know to the ring so that as I snug up the up the ring if the pump turns it'll line up sometimes you got to back off and, and do it again but it's important that when you're done these these two marks line up here Sometimes you got to play with it a little bit to get it lined up. Do it. See, I've got my index marks lined up, and you see why I, I was so concerned about that ring, and I stretched it out because you can't. Once this is in, you can't see if that ring had got unseated. The rubber o-ring had got unseated from its groove, uh, so that's why it was important. I stretched it out so it would lay in there nicely, and I'm confident I've got a good seal. There'll be no leak.
dust protectors. Now I'm going to put my feed line back in. It's still got WD-40 on there, so it's looped up nice. Pull your tab back. Pull twist. And she's back in there. And see, here's how the, the new pump comes with the with your connector. Okay, I'm getting ready to put uh, the gas tank back in. There's my straps. I reconditioned those. Uh, they're available. You can buy them, but since these just had surface rust, I, I took the um, the rubber uh, insulators off that go on the tank side and, um, you know, rust treated, sanded them down, uh, put rust treatment on, primed, and painted. No big deal. I did it while I was doing some other stuff. And so now they're all ready to go. Just a few hand tools I'll need to put it in. There's the tank with the new pump in it. So we're ready to go. The tank's nice and light. It's empty. There's no gas in it. So it's going to make it easy for me to, to put it back in there. I'm also going to um, put a little, little WD-40 on the, the other line when I pop that in there. Just to aid in lubing it up. Don't want to break the elbow. It's just a matter of connecting up as I get it high enough in there. Slide on the fuel inlet hose, reconnect the evap hose, and then I won't do this yet because I have uh, the evap canister still out of the car, but this one just clicks on the, the evap canister. You just put your straps back in. Just lay those in place first. They just slide up in those hooks up there. And it's important to note there's a right and a left. If you look at the tank, it's plain to see. The one on the um, passenger side of the car has a longer flat section because the tank is just shaped that way. And so you'll match match up the shape of the straps. The bends and the straps are preformed to match the tank, right and right and left. Pretty self-explanatory. Just take your time, look at it. Okay, let me just walk you through a, f a few things in putting the tank back in here. Um, the first thing, the uh, driver's side of the tank, it lays up, just lay it up over the exhaust. I've got my exhaust um, hanging here loose, and so I'm just laying it on the exhaust. That end's got to go up in first, and then the passenger side comes up in. So now, um, if you're doing this higher up in the air, you could put a jack stand under the tank. But since I'm on the ground here, this is about the right height for hooking things up. Just slide the tank under, uh, lay it up over the exhaust. Now I'm going to hook up my things like my fuel line, my electrical connections. I can do all that now at this height. Uh, the fuel inlet is going to have to wait in the evap hoses. So you just you hook everything up, and then as you raise the tank up in place, you just make sure you like your your fuel line and everything. There's actually a clip on the side of the tank in the front at the right point. You clip that in there, so you make sure you're not crushing your line or anything. It's really not complicated if you just take your time. Look. Uh, same thing with the electrical connectors. Once you've got them connected, you've got a lot of slack on them. You can, but you just want to make sure. 
you lay them up in there where they, they tuck up. You know, in the section up there above the tank, there's, there's, there's room so you don't, you don't crush the electrical lines. In fact, there's a piece of tape up there. If you get high enough, if you want, you can, you can just tape the harness up there. A little tip, what I did uh, as I'm raising the tank up, there's this, this access hole under the rear seat. So I just pulled the wiring and the connectors up through here so that I know I don't have them down there somewhere getting squashed by the, the tank as I press it up in place. And once I'm done, I can just nestle these back in here and put the, put the cap back on. This way I know I'm not I'm not crushing the wires. Just a little tip there. Okay, just want to show you a couple things. I finished up the tank install. I've got the, the straps just loosely started here. Big thing, I'm, I'm going to lube up these really good so they don't rust again. It'll make, anytime you got to take the tank out again in the future, it'll make it a breeze if, if you put a nice... Um, know heavy um, lubricant on here that'll stay in the weather so anyways you want to hang it loosely because the right and the left centering of it is very important because on the right side it's, it the clearance is very very tight you see this the white up there that's a clip that holds the fuel line in and so it just comes up right next to that and then on the other side See that up there? My new brake lines here. The tank comes right up next to them. I mean, there's not. It's like about a sixteenth of an inch. So either way, right and left with the tank, you want to have it perfectly centered so you're not, um, you know, crushing the lines or the clips or anything. It's no big deal, but it's just take your time. Uh, that's why I put it in loosely before you before you go ahead and tighten it up in the wrong position. And then the other reason to keep, I'll keep the uh, driver side one, I'll, I'll, I'll get it fairly tight, but I'm gonna, I won't tighten it all the way because when I put in my new parking brake cable, it goes right in here above the strap, and so you need to leave a little slack in there to make it easier to pop that in, in there. But that's basically it. Um, the, I got the, the fuel inlet hose back on. Here's the EVAP line. I'll put a little lube on that and, and click that in there. It goes back in a lot easier than it comes out. A little tricky getting those out. And then when I get my EVAP canister back in, I'm going to hook that back up. But uh, that's basically it, except for uh, putting the fuel filter back in in the front. And again, I made sure that my, my lines up there were clear from any interference when I raised the tank up into place and that's something you double check before you tighten your straps up all the way make sure your your fuel lines are clear in the front here the plastic lines so you don't crush them and you know you can um, they've got little holders that you click into as you raise the tank up to keep them uh, secure and out of the way I mentioned a number of times about looping stuff up and uh, an example of the stuff that I like, I like this, this Castle Endura. It's a heavy duty penetrating grease. What it does is it goes on um, fairly liquid and then immediately it starts to thicken. And so it's got the advantage of the thinness where it penetrates and then it thickens up and it, it'll tend to stay on. It's, it gets kind of sticky. It'll tend to stay on whatever you spray it on. So. Uh, I like this stuff, it's really multi-purpose use, but an example is where I'll use it is on the uh, gas tank straps. I'll first of all spray it on there now to aid the lubrication as I tighten them up, and then when I'm done, the exposed threads there, I'll spray it on there just to keep them protected from the elements so they don't rust up again.